Um, uh, first, I wanted to, to thank, and, and I don't know how many of you have been going through the Relentless Reading Plan. Um, we started with John. Let me tell you something. If, if you haven't, or if you missed the, the last couple of buses, this is a great time for start over. So I, uh, uh, John is a great book um, to read, to take in, to learn. And, and this is what we are going to be talking for, for the next uh, three weeks as, as we go through the book. Um, and again, we, we are going to be jumping to so many different stories, um, but, but it, it find that, that extra five minutes in your day. I, I encourage you, I challenge you to go over and, and, and just be part of it. And also, if, if you are new and you're visiting, we, we have this great text message uh, that Pastor Van delivers every 6 o'clock uh, in the morning. <laughs> it's a great alarm and it's a great way to start your day. Um, it, it, it takes a, a, a couple minutes and he goes through, through the meat and bones of what the chapter of the day is going to be. So if you have a bulletin, you will find there some information how to uh, sign up easily. Um, John, now, uh, we went over and as I was preparing this, this message, uh, with, with family, with, with friends, with students, uh, such a beloved book. For, for so many, I found out, is, is their favorite gospel or, or is their, their, their go-to book. Uh, it has so much, and it's, it's so, much, so many different perspectives, right? When we go through the gospel, every author gives us a, a different angle, a different view on the life of Jesus. So, for example, if you guys who have to uh, define, and this one is kind of easy because it's, it's pretty much open, but if you will define uh, this stand from your point of view, it would be a different one that from the guys on section one, the way they see it, uh, maybe similar to the guys on, on section three. Uh, and for me, it would be a different description. That's how the gospel works and is all centered on the life of Jesus. Now, John uh, dedicated all these uh, readings, all, all, all this time, just to share the three, three years and a half of Jesus' ministry. While others go through the genealogy, while others go through uh, their background check and, and everything, so all and everybody will be happy, uh, John just goes and starts telling us about what Jesus came to do, came to be. So let's start by the beginning, and by the beginning, I mean the end. I don't know how many of you are like me, that whenever you hold a, a magazine or a book, immediately you go to the last page. Uh, I, I always recall that, right, I have a magazine, I start from the bottom, and, and I start going my way all the way. Uh, something is not right there, my mama says. <laughs> or, or when you have a book, right, please tell me I'm not the only one, that you just go to the book and, and you might just sneak peek at the end to see, okay, okay, 640 pages, I, I can get th that done by tomorrow test, and then you start just going at it. Um, so John, chapter uh, 21, the last verse, says these encouraging words to us. Now, there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that could be written. That's just great. So you will be reading for the next three weeks a book, and at the end, the author is telling you, you know what, there are so many other things that we are uh, being left out, uh, that, that, that is, is so many more miracles, so many other great things that Jesus did, and you just will not know them. <laughs> that is just great, Right? So many questions come up out of it. And, and, and the, the, in chapter 20, um, verse uh, 30 and 31 says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. Seriously now? 
we have this man doing these great signs, these miracles to his disciples. Nobody took note of any of this. Um, how different is our culture today, right? We go for breakfast, we snap a picture. We go to Disney, we go crazy. Let's go Facebook Live. Let's get everybody getting dizzy on the roller coaster watching us, right? And, and, but here it says uh, there are so many other things that are not, you guys are not going to know. Verse 31. But these are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that by relieving and by believing, you might have life in his name. The stories we have, the prophecies that were fulfilled, the miracles that are recorded, those are enough evidence for us to believe. To believe that Jesus is the Christ. Now the question that poses for us this morning is, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Do you really believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior? Are you enjoying this personal relationship with him? Um, they were wait. They, from the prophets until Jesus came, 400 years of absolute silence. No prophecy, no vision, no miracles. God just was standing still. Then John comes from out from the desert. This is not the John. I'm talking about John the Baptist. And, and he starts uh, preaching and, and starts uh, calling for the people to be repented. And, and he got some disciples with him. And, and one day he was with his disciples and, and he points at Jesus walking by and says, there he goes, the Lamb of God. So go with me, please, to John chapter 1, verse 37. It says the two disciples heard him say this and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, what are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi which means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they came and so they were staying and they stayed with him that day for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah which means the Christ. So they are with this man, and this main points, okay, this is the man that you are seeking. That's the Lamb of God. And they immediately start following him. And we start following him, and, and says, where are you staying? We want to stay with you. We want to learn more. And those hours, that evening that they spent together was enough for him to the next morning to run to his brother and says, we have found the Messiah. We have found salvation. Jesus changes you. Jesus is the only one that can bring real and absolute change into your life. How many books do we find? Even now when we go to the store to get some bread and meat, we're waiting. And there are all these self-helping guides and, and books on, on how to live better, eat better, do this in a better way, change your life. In, in, uh, before it was 40 days. Now there are some people claiming they can change you in 40 minutes. I came and doing some research on YouTube. The, the guy was promising, you follow my video, video uh, subscribe, like, press the bell button. In five minutes, your life will be amazing <laughs> because you have to do all these things. Uh, shipping and hundred not included. <laughs> We, we want to change. That's, that's in our nature. We want to get better. We want to improve. The problem is 
we are leaving Jesus out of it. We don't leave space. We will have no room for Jesus to change you. So it was this man uh, being witness and, and hearing about what Jesus was doing. And, and he was a man of the law. His name was Nicodemus. And, and he goes at night with Jesus. And he ha starts having this conversation. And John chapter 3 goes on from the verse 1 to the verse 20. Jesus just explaining to him how you need to change. How you need to be born again. And Nicodemus was so confused. He was taking every word literally. And he was trying to understand how do I get back with my mom? How, how, how this is even happening? Jesus shows him that the love of the Father was enough to change every life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. A love like no other. It's impossible for me to, to grasp, to compare. How many here are moms, dads? And, and, and you have your son, your daughter, and, and you will give your life for them just to keep them out of arm's way. You, you will just do anything for them. And then it's, it's this love from God that is so radical, that is so different. He sent his son for a stranger, even worse. He, said he, he sent his son to die for somebody that doesn't deserve it. I have family in, in, in Argentina. My, my, my whole family is, is there. And, and my mom is always telling, he, telling me. And, and uh, it's far away from a five-star resort, Argentina, right now. There's always, we are always on the brink of civil war and all these crazy things, right? Um, and my mom is always telling me, please, send me, send me the kids. Uh, send me at least Lucas. He's eight years old. We, we can have him here. We will take care of, of him. Send him for a couple of months during the summer. No way, Jose. <laughs> no, I'm afraid of going. What do you mean I'm going to send my kid to expose him to, to so many things? To You know, uh, no, it's, 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 no I, I, I love and I trust and I dearly. But you're welcome to, to, to come over. I think you let's go to Disney Springs and have fun. And then you go back to Argentina. But I'm not sending the kids over there uh, without my, my, me being present, right? And, and, and God says, you know, I love you so much. I want to change your life so much that I'm going to send my son. So he is being mocked. So he is beaten. So he is speeding on. So he's nailed in the cross. Because you did something terrible. You walk away from my communion. And the only way is a love like no other. And it's Jesus who changes you. It's Jesus who changes me. Look around. I want you to really, really look around. And I want to see, I want you to understand how many different cultures are here in this morning. How many different generations are being here represented. And how many of us in a short time can call ourselves friends. And how many of these friendships, and, and we were talking, and actually I was with, with Jeff talking about this during the week. How many of us will, will have nothing to do with each other if it wasn't because of this place? Not this building. Because the presence of Jesus Christ in our life. Jesus changes you to the core. To a place that you can be hanging out with a guy that is uh, 30, 40 years older than you. And you will have a great time because you share Jesus. 
that, that you can have even a, a conversation with somebody that even has an accent, like Don. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> and, and something magically happens that you can understand him. <laughs> love you, love you, bro. Um, but it's, it's Jesus, and it's in his love. And this is not something that, that we can take for granted. This is something to be cherished and celebrated. And this is something that if you are in the line and you are struggling, the challenge for you this morning is take the next step. Jesus wants to change you. Now what happens when Jesus changes you? Let's jump to John 4. And... and, and Again, the, the six chapters that we read this week, seven chapters that we read this week, are very condensed. So if you were reading, you will saw that Jesus was on a wedding, and then he goes to a feast, and then out of the feast, he jumps in a boat, and he goes to another feast, and he says that they were living out in, from party to party, right? But, but these six chapters are actually a, a two years uh, Easter or Passover appears in chapter 2 and also appears in chapter 6. So this is a very condensed story of all these interactions that Jesus has with all these people. But, but um, again, over two years happen between these events uh, when Jesus is, is talking uh, with them. And in, in John chapter 4, verse 47 says, When this man uh, heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son. This man was an officer. This man already was uh, aware of the power that Jesus had. And, and, and he goes to him because, uh, you know, his son, he was, he was a pound, borderline dead. He was about to die. So Jesus said to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. This, this was a man of authority. And he was referring to Jesus. And he was telling him, I need you now. To come with me to heal my son. Um, it ever happened to you that you were called by a, a, an official, an officer, by authority? And when an officer said, sir, calm down, get off the car, license and registration, whatever he must said, we just dance. We just give everything. And, and, and this man... In all his reason, and again, for those who are parents, it might be easy to understand. Think about this. And, and John, uh, a few weeks back, shared uh, his story with uh, uh, his son being sick and taking some pills and, and rushing to the hospital. And how those few minutes were like never ending just to see what his son was going to happen with him. And, and, and this man, he traveled days to find Jesus and to tell him, now you are coming with me. Because if, if we travel fast the next couple of days, we just might make it in time to say, my son. I want you to understand the, the, the cry of desperation from this man. Jesus said to him in verse 50, go, your son will live. What? No, no, you, you had to come. You, you were at the wedding. And you, you changed the water into wine. And I heard what you did with, with some fishes and some bread. And, and you blessed them. And, and said, no, you, you have to come, right? That would be my first reaction. Human, understandable. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. Jesus changes you. Jesus also will challenge you. And sometimes, if you haven't been, you will be in this position. When Jesus will 
will grab us and will take the juice out of us. And he will, he will have to break us in order to restore us. And this man with his dying son, and we can tell because after this story goes, he believed in Jesus and he started walking back. He started going back to his home and says the next day, so this man was already walking for a day, going back, he found some of the servants that they are coming to tell him, guess what? Your son, he is better. He is well. When did this happen? The same hour that Jesus told you, go to your son. What a challenge. Sometimes we will have to walk blindly just to see Jesus make our life different. Not better. At one point I was going to say make our life better. No. It's going to be different. Because the gospel doesn't offer you perfect health. The gospel doesn't offer you riches and, and safe retirement. The gospel doesn't sell, hope, promise you luxury vacations or a cruise. I'm sorry. The gospel offers you something much, much bigger. Yes, eternal security. We are challenged to live different. And sometimes in order to do that, we have to have a life of, of obedience. Uh, and sometimes that requires for us to trust. But let me tell you something. If you have to trust with somebody, trust in Jesus. I don't even trust myself. Pastor Van preached about me a few weeks ago. He mentioned those guys, air quote, that go to the gym on January 1st and get enrolled for $1 because it doesn't cost anything. It's $1. And then, because I'm cheap, I go to the cheap gym, which is $10 a month. So you don't feel it, right? So it says, okay, I promise. I promise I'm doing this. I go, I'll sign up. There you, there you go, your dollar, and this is $10 a month. So let me tell you right now, I have wasted $31. <laughs> we make so many promises to ourselves. We, we invest in ourselves in all the wrong ways, and we like to challenge ourselves, and, and then it's just failure. Let Jesus change you for real because his love is a love that none of us can replicate. Let Jesus challenge you. Open your heart. Open your mind. What's next? And thanks God because he's faithful and his promises are forever. And we know that the sacrifice he did in the cross do not expire. How is our investments? How is our work then for the kingdom? Because we can say, it. yes, Chris, I heard this. I heard this actually when I was eight years old in my case, in, in, in a children's festival. And, and the pastor was just, like, happened to many of you, room full of people, but he was talking to me. And that day I decided to give my life to Jesus. And that could be a great story uh, a few decades ago, right? But what happens since then? How are we being taking the challenge to work for the kingdom of God? How have we been preparing ourselves? And not because God needs us for the kingdom, but it's something that we has to come from us to glorify God with our life, with our time. John chapter 6, verse 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. 
whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whomever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up for the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. Jesus chose you. Of all, Jesus chooses you. He doesn't want anybody to perish. He sacrificed. What he did in the cross cost so much that he did it for the whole humanity. Um, sometimes we will have to leave things behind. On the last day of the feast, says on John chapter 7, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. What type of thing is flowing out of our hearts right now? I mean, we, we can take pictures and, and we can tell great stories. But what is coming out, out of my heart? What is coming out of your heart? heart when when we find that Jesus has chosen me such a privilege not even given to the angels in for us to go yes do you believe that Jesus is the Christ have you announced it to others have you shared it with others have people seen a tangible audible ways that Jesus is the change they need. That Jesus is the challenge that they need to took forward. Sometimes we have to leave things behind. On one of the trips that I took to Argentina with the family, the whole security envoy, you know, we are going for a week, so we took like six bags and boxes and lots of things to give away to uh, our nephews and brothers and sisters and, and, and candies and this. And my sister was getting married. Um, so we, we go through through customs, right? And, and, and there is all this long uh, um, line of people. And the guys at customs, um, they are just checking to see if, if you are bringing anything that is not supposed to be enter to the country without paying, of course, the proper uh, um, fees. Um, so, okay, okay, it's, it's no problem. Um, I, I, I said, I, I don't live here. I'm from Argentina, but my, my home is somewhere else. So I'm just here to see family. So I says, no, 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 no. Let me be the judge of that, says the lady. So she started putting all the bags through all this x-ray machine, and they start going, what is that? Those are five pounds of sneakers. My nephews won't accept me if I don't show up with candy. So I said, well, I think that's too much candy. You don't know my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes to this, right? And they said, what is this? And they took a camera. I says, well, I'm coming to a wedding. I am taking photos, and it's for our memories, and it's being with family. I says, no, no, you have to pay extra for this camera. He says, no, no, but, but I, I don't live here. I just come here and I go and I'll, I'll, I'll take it back. He says, no, no, you have to pay. I'm not paying. And then they get the laptop. What is this? Well, I might be in a third world country, but I still need my Netflix. <laughs> no, no, you are not. And, and we start all this fight with all these people. 
and, and more of, of the security guys were starting to surrounding us. And, and at this point, just socks are flying all over the airport. And, 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 and people are moving and are going to their beloved ones and they are leaving. And we turn around and we are the last ones on the whole area just uh, dealing um, with, with these people. And at one point, it's, you know, you just, like, just leave it. You, you want it, you, you, you know, let's put it in a box and, and I'll take it on my way out, you know, forget about it, leave it. Let's, let's, let's go, let's enjoy, let's, 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 let's go with family. How many times it's hard for us to, to leave behind the anger? How many times it's hard for us to leave the sorrow people that have hurting us in, in bad ways and we're still holding that and we are not leaving it and we cannot move forward we cannot make any advance because it's like no 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 this is my misery this is my emptiness let it go leave it behind Jesus has chosen you he has paid a, a price too high for us to be hanging out on things that, you know, are from this world. Leave it behind. I mean, sometimes also revealing ourselves by who we really are. Jesus knows our hearts. He knows our minds. But sometimes we, we like to put this, this shell, this coat. I, I am a home inspector also. Uh, and, and I get to go to people's houses and I get into the attics and I, I pretty much help them to have bigger discounts with the insurance company. Right? And, and there is these reports that you have to do that you have to check the, the structure of the house. And how the, and how the house will react in case of a, a strong wind comes over and the whole thing will just go away. So there are certain things that you need to go and, and check and document and take some, some pictures. So I go to this family and, and they are so proud. And they tell me, yes, the house won't go anywhere. We just spray foam the whole attic, the whole thing. I said, the whole thing? The whole thing. Let me see. I go up. Yes, the whole thing is thick with six inches of this yellow foam going all over the place. Now, uh, as an inspector, you, you have to check for, for certain things that you cannot see. So I says, yes, the house will act as a one big roof. It's, it's all... Yes, it's great. And I get down and I spend some time just trying to see if they miss foam in, in a little corner that I could take a picture of the nail or the clip or something, right? Nothing. And I come and say, you guys did a great job. I mean, yes, this thing has foam. Yes, it has foam. <laughs> now it's the bad news. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I cannot help you. Because you are telling me that it has the nails that he has the clips, that he has everything, but I cannot see it. And I, and I need some sort of proof. And, and sometimes we are so afraid that we create this form around our lives and we hide our imperfections or even our securities so nobody else Will hurt us and we think we are okay we think we are fine but are we we need to have space for god to enter into our hearts to really look into it he wants to change you he loves you like no one ever will be he will challenge you but that challenge is going to make you live a different life. He has chosen you. And in order to, to move forward, you will have to leave some things behind. In John chapter 7, at one point, 
uh, th there is all these discussions based on all these uh, declarations that Jesus is doing. It's amazing to see how a couple years later, Nicodemus' name shows up again. And he wasn't now this man of the law, hidden, consulting with Jesus. Now they define it, he's one of them. Nicodemus took the challenge. He was changed. He was a new creature. Where are we standing now? We might be stuck in the past. Or even worse, we might be stuck in the present. Living day by day. Trying to say, oh, tomorrow I will get around it. Tomorrow, yes. I've been going tomorrow to the gym for the last three months. And it's not going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> I can say that freely because my wife is not here. <laughs> you... We, we might just be waiting for the next day. The next day is going to be better, and then I'm going to serve God. Then I'm going to get involved. Then I'm going to find a community group. Then I'm going to help somebody with a meal. The day is now. The change in your life begins today. The impact that Jesus will bring in your life is for eternity. Let's pray. And for those who haven't crossed the line, um, you can just say in your heart, Jesus, I give you my life. And, and if this is your prayer, um, I, I would love to talk to you after the service. Um, if you are struggling, if you are facing a challenge that you think is, is too great, let's, let's talk. Let's walk together. God, thank you so much because you have chosen us. Thank you so much for, for loving us in a way that it changes our, our destiny. It changes our life. Us being imperfect. By your blood, you make us pure. And in your eyes, we can claim an eternal life. Lord, as we face the challenges and, and as we are going through a difficult times, we ask you, Lord, that you will help us to live a different life, to come out of on the other side stronger and more dependent on your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.